Now the rain. What are you reading, Kim? Hey man, how do you do? What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Sir, how could you not see the phasmid? See? He stares at the reeds and falls silent. Mr. Dras? The man does not respond. He keeps staring, black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed mouth shaking with fear and longing. Uh, we'll touch his shoulder gently. The plastic cape feels coarse. A light shiver passes the man. Other than that, no reaction. He feels small and frail. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is, this solves our transportation problem. Doesn't it, Mr. Dras? The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here, while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. What has happened to this man? Old age and shock. He looks at him, then you. I think it's the phasmid. Yes, the arrest and the appearance of the phasmid, the combined stress. But you think it's something more than that, don't you? There's much more. Remember what it said when it spoke. He couldn't see it, Kim. It's just the reeds for him. That could be part of the shock. But you're right. Something is off here. Mr. Dras. He touches the man's shoulder. No response. Maybe this is how the phasmid has stayed hidden all these years? Then how did we see it? Oh, you mean, whatever does this, does it over time? Teenagers, kids, drunks, sightings are brief, and hence not credible. But anyone who spends a long time with it... Yes, you you forget it's there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dross, have you ever seen a stick insect pretending to be the reeds? The, the, the. the old man stutters. The doctors will have to look at this. I hope your station has better medical personnel than 57. This is a little advance for a nurse. He's been here a long time. Who knows how much of it... In its company. He did seem distressed when it finally came to arresting him. Like he didn't want to leave this place. And the insect, maybe. He looks at his notebook. Yeah, maybe... It could have been... A lover. I have absolutely forgotten to take notes. I hope I remember all of this. This will be one hell of a report. Thank God we have the photo. No one would believe you without it. We found some things in the phasmid's nest, Mr. Dross. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should... Show him the ceramic helmet. Nothing. Just dull staring. Not even rage left, wherever he is. If Kuno kicked it into the sea, as he said he did, the ebb would put it back here. This makes sense. Mr. Dross could have picked it up. Or the phasmid, even. If it did, this is incredible. Yeah, yeah, the orangey's passport. No reaction. His breathing is slow, and he appears very old all of a sudden. Around 80. He's aging as we speak. Did you take this passport and other papers from a boy on the coast? The spirit. He means the first He bit. hears us. The spirit? No reply. He's gone again. Try something else? We got him back for a moment. A detached scope. I... I lost. You lost it, Mr. Draws. He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. With the help of a magpie phasmid. The lieutenant observes the lens sparkle in your hand. This sight is a T9, Mr. Draws. Was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot? Silence. Not even a sigh. You've gotten all you will out of this poor being. I'm going to let you rest now, Mr. Draws. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. Hang tight. We should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe here if we don't take too long. Okay, then quick to the mainland. We cannot let... This man die, and we have to tell. We have to tell. 
the morels of the phasmid, of course. Morel. We don't need that anymore. We found everything we needed to find. The Insulindian Phasmid. The skiff is swaying on the waves by the dock. Let's, Let's return. We are done here. Kim says, adjusting his glasses as he looks out over the The border. skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet, but for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. The man with the sunglasses and the woman. Two men and a woman stand Two. on the concrete square of a nameless village, looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer. The sea is calm. Duck. You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff. What will happen now? Careful. Ah. Uh, Lillian. Lillian. Look what the tide brought him. Vic Mer. As the man without sunglasses, suddenly his expression changes and he tilts his head. Harry, you're bleeding all over the place. You're half dead. Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to what you've just seen. This is the man with sunglasses from the whirling in rags. But where are his sunglasses? Ah, uh, wait, you're the man with sunglasses. That's right. And you're bleeding. Who are you people? Hello, I'm Trent Heilerstam. I believe we've met on several occasions. Oh man. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicumar. And this is your special task force, or what's left of it. Special Consultant Trant Heidelstam, Battle Officer Judith Mino. Hi. We've come to scrape what's left what? of you off the pavement. Lieutenant Kim Kisuragi, Prison 57. We've just come from the island, where our investigation led us. What is happening now? The scene is making even him feel as though he has to justify your actions. We might need your help with something later. He had suddenly regaining his confidence. As if he recalled that he's in fact a decorated police lieutenant and not a naughty boy. But this is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. Uh, mm. Okay, we've got to have my back. Let's destroy them. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuhagi. Judith says, warmly flashing the return of the tiniest of smiles. Now she's flirting with him. Uh, forget about all this. There's a giant. We are not forgetting about anything. Look at you. He points at you with both hands. Okay. No one else seems bothered by the bleeding. Bothered by it? Harry, you look like you need a fucking organ transplant. Oh, fuck it. Let's not get into that. What's this about? Harry, we want to help you. Trant, I believe this is where you come in? Uh, this is the horse-faced woman. I don't know why you named her that, but it was beyond idiotic. You should never address her using those words again. Um, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. No, Trant, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? What does he have to say for himself? What? He left you to catch the bullets. Shit kid. What an interest in Monica. <sighs> hmm. 
So Trand Heidelstam turns out to be special consultant Trand Heidelstam. Yes, I'm Trand Heidelstam. I never said I wasn't Trand Heidelstam. Wait, what was up with the kid then? Mikael? Mikael is my son. Okay, but what's up with all the interesting history spying on no, me? No, I was just interested in the Feld building and the Martinez beachhead. And Mikael wanted to see Martinez. It was a coincidence. Him being there with his son, it was not a coincidence. It's difficult to see, but he was worried about you. And also interested in the Feld building. Hmm. So what are you special consulting here? What indeed? I was asked to share my take on some of the more obscure theories developed in Königstein in the 30s. Like partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory. He's here to see if you're insane. He is smart. Let's move on. I'm not insane. What's a shit kid? You. Shit kid? That's you. Maybe you've deserved it. No, I didn't deserve it. My goodness, you aren't the man with sunglasses at all. You're not even blonde. Guilty as charged. I heard you'd lost your mind and your memory. I wanted to see if it was true. And it was. Good work, Harry. You're insane now. There's one less person for me and everyone else to rely on. He was too sarcastic for you to realize who he was. Huh. Maybe if you hadn't been so sarcastic, I would have realized I knew you. I'm clinically depressed, Harry. Sorry if I wasn't in the mood to butter you up after you told us to fuck off. Actually, I suspected something was over. Did you? Or did you literally not recognize my face? We've been partners for how long, Harry? Don't answer that. You don't remember. Absolutely no idea. A hundred years? Judging by the familiarity you feel toward him, two years minimum? Or maybe a short, but close stint on the task force. He's right. Don't start guessing. Now's not a good time. <sighs> so... Um, how did you know I was here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. After all that Sylvie stuff, he betrayed Shit, me. Shit, kid. He didn't betray you. He just told us the direction you went in. Who's Sylvie? Well... No one. It's not important. It better not be. He means you better not be partying with this Sylvie shit kid. Ah, uh, not to the female officer. I'm sorry I didn't recognize you before. It's okay. I didn't come here to gloat or to fool you. Neither did he, actually. We're just worried. That's right. Worried. I'm always worried about you. Every time you don't show up to work, or when you do about stink, you're a worry fest. She's worried about you. I'm worried about you. Even special consultant Backpedal is worried about you. Everyone worries. Instead of working. Hmm. So I'm important f to you. That's nice to hear. You mentioned the task force? Yeah. Major Crimes Unit, under Lieutenant Dubois and Vicomar. Ring any bells? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who else is in res? Refresh my memory. Refresh your memory? It's a goddamn Major Crimes Unit. There's you, me, Jude, drawn fucking Heidelstam, and Guillaume Bevy. Guillaume Bevy? He stares at you. I'm technically just a civilian advisor. Oh, fuck you. You're part of this shit show. First, who is Guillaume Bevy? Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. Guillaume Bevy is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good. Then he left because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Other people have left too. Good, smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient patrol officer are still here. And Tron because I'm forcing him to stay. Is this Guillaume Bevy blonde and partial to sunglasses? Is he blonde with sunglasses like you were? See? There. He's getting it. I was impersonating him. Look at me, I'm G. Bevy. It was going to be funny, but then you really did have brain damage. So not so much anymore. He sincerely thought it was going to be amusing. For both of you. Okay, what does the unit do? Do? 
It's a major crimes unit. We clear the desk of cases so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We are shit here now, Harry. Because of you. They're your posse. Or what remains of it. Hand-picked. Hand-lost. The 41st isn't... Uh... Kim trails off, not wishing to finish the sentence. Hmm... Where have you been all this time? There was a mercenary tribunal. God damn it, Harry. He shifts his weight, crosses his arms and looks you in the you eye. You told us to fuck off. You said we're cramping your style. Your detective god. Fuck everything. All we burn. Detect or die. Hmm. Why it's so you let me face a squad of trained killers alone just to teach me a lesson? It wasn't like that. Fuck you, Harry. We didn't know there was gonna be a tribunal, did we? Hmm. Hmm. All will burn. Make no mistake about it, Wigmar. Here we go. Alcoholic delirium. Visions. All must pay. Shakes his head. Duped again? No one's who they say they are. Duped? Hey, here's a brilliant idea. Don't be a morbid drunk and you won't be duped so easily. Garner, scab, leader, this. Kim, tell me at least you are who you said you were. Yes, I'm still Kim Kisuragi, still a lieutenant from Prison 57. Still caught up in this crossfire, too. Okay, no, none of this is ringing any bells. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Trant, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors, he talks without slurring, he can drive a boat, he's standing, reasoning. All good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia, episodic and semantic. Meaning, you forgot both who you are and the definitions of money, Isola, Pearl, and so on. As displayed in the station call, our interactions with him and I don't want to be a snitch, but also mine with him before, when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, what do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and why not socioeconomically? Hmm. I'm a highly experimental detective. This was a method I used to solve the case. Son of fucking Long here. Detective far out son of Long on the case. I have accomplished things no normal detective ever has. I have detected a... He has indeed had the possibility before. I have trouble believing him, of course. But he seems to want to convince himself of it. And I've seen him work. His methods are unorthodox. With all due respect, Lieutenant, you're bewitched by the shit, kid. It happens. What doesn't happen is a cop wiping his own memory to solve a case. In fact, it's not possible to wipe one's memory at all, even with the amount of pot and pilsner he downs every hour. He's simply lying, or insane, or both. Detective Vigmer, I'm not saying he's the son of Lung, but lying? I mean... He has blacked out before. I have? Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders. One was after the two drunks case, the other when we looked into that mural. So you don't remember not remembering. Beautiful. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea, yes. Practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here is my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. Gestures toward the scenery. Look at the ruins, the neon. Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. 
As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world team, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Total input. Hardwired to the free market. He just needed for its end. Okay, Trent, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. I'm glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work in the major crimes unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. He's not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. Leadership now. I'm ready to lead again. No one even mentioned that. I misphrased my question. It should have been, is he able to put his clothes on and use the party? Or do we need to get him on a disability pension? What now? Now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Really? No. Now we discuss that. What the fuck did you do to a motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? Ah. Uh, I think it was stolen by Jacob Irv. Jacob Irv? The famous tip-top Tony driver. I know who Jacob Irv is. I wanted to give you a chance to stop fucking me. How naive of me. You drove a 45,000 real police vehicle into the ocean. What did I expect? It doesn't matter. <sighs> your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. <sighs> Wait, my badge? The thing that tells people you're a police officer. It's here. In a rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't sustain a grip on the smooth plastic, and the badge slips out of your hand. Let's try to catch it. Oh. You juggle the badge for a second, unsuccessfully, and it lands on the ground, some two meters away. Ouch! You strained your elbow trying to catch that stupid uh. thing. Damn it. He found it. He found it, Jean. It's his badge. And your gun? Man stares at you unimpressed. As if having your badge and gun are natural states, not achievements. Gun. Yeah, you don't have that. Maybe you can philosophize your way out of it. <sighs> Gun badge car. These are all things. Things don't matter. People do. You're drunk, aren't you? You lost your gun and you're drunk. You're a drunk gunless bomb. I can't smell it. I quit drinking forever. It's only me in this boring hellhole now. I don't buy it. Why do you smell like a corpse then, huh? He's wounded. It's been a long week, and he's handled an actual corpse. Yeah, it's been a bit of a week. I'm sorry I smell bad. A bit of a week? You're drunk, and you let a suspect escape, a certain classier, because you were too drunk to assess a flight risk. We've read the report, Sari. Lieutenant Kitsuhagis. We know. <sighs> Clasia, she was some kind of spy from the Occident, specially trained. Oh, well, if she was specially trained, I'm not even gonna get into the other suspect who also escaped. Yeah, Ruby something. Or the fact that you very likely sold your gun for booze. That's peanuts. That's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. Compared to the eight people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It was fucking mass murder. He did everything he could. We did everything we could. The company hired unvetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois got between them and the locals. Here comes the cavalry. He did so at considerable risk to his person. Remember, he was shot. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. Yeah, yeah, um... The firefight is a trivial matter compared to the greatest discovery of this century. Wait, it's better if I... He says in a lowered voice. It's so much better if he does this. A million times better. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. <clears throat> he brushes a stray strand of hair out of his eye and cuffs. He thinks of apologizing, but decides against it. You've spent the week with him, on this case. What is your take? On the case? On Lieutenant Euphretor Dubois. Well, the drinking, 
The gun losing. Also losing the badge. That's all true. Although he has not been drinking on the job this week. See? One week. Then there's the apocalypse thing. At first I thought it was a joke, but it's not. He actually thinks the world is about to end in a bloodletting or gloaming. We're about to become vapor, even. It's worrying, especially considering his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a Mazovian socio-economist. He wants to liquidate the ruling class, which, again, for a police officer, is a little odd. Hey, we don't want to liquidate anyone. We don't just want to talk them out. You should yell something. That's not a good idea. Yes, let's let the big boys talk. And then there's the motor carriage in the sea. Something I was not present for. But despite all this, he is a great detective. One of the best I have seen, in fact. He can talk human beings into telling him anything. And he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped working on the case. He is tireless, madly driven. Well, except that one time when he stopped to sing karaoke, which, by the way, I have to disagree with you, Mr. Vikmar, was a valiant effort. He really sang his heart out. Okay, he did something. Other than that one time, he has tirelessly worked on the case, and he solved it. We have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator, locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He apprehended a straggler who stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution who's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. A new species? A colossal stick insect. It was on the island, camouflaged as the reeds. It uh, unfolded from the reeds. I think we may be dealing with the insulindian phasmid. He takes out the photo and shows it to the yes. officers across the yard. Thick white snow falls all around you. Flakes stick to the glossy photo of the phasmid. As you can see, it's about three meters tall. In fact, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. This is what I've been trying to tell you about. Fucking hell. Is that... Is this somehow connected to the case? He ignores you, still staring at the phasmid. The killer did not seem to be aware of the phasmid's presence, exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia. He fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. Yes, the phasmid may have contributed to his mental state in some way over the years. So it is connected. I must say this is absolutely extraordinary. It's... I don't even have words for it. Yes, it really does make it hard to fire the drunk. His tired eyes full of the photo. As the lieutenant puts it away. This is a very, very sad man who has just seen something that's made him forget his sadness. Now you make your case. Now is the time. Now or never. Hmm. <laughs> so, the killer Lilianovich draws. We have a strong motive for Lilianovich. him. Lilianovich? A revolutionary matronym. Ah, oh, what? Yeah? The custom started in Grad, where they have patronyms. Krasovich, Larsovich, etc. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used matronyms, derived from the mother's name instead. This man's mother was Lillian. His Lillian's son, Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Revachol. So... It is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trant. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. You said you have a motive? Of course, excuse me. I just thought it was noteworthy. He wasn't quite sure about the straggler before he heard this detail. It must have convinced him. Hmm. He, being a communard, probably had to do with it. You know, a class war first. Huh? And it worked? He got a war going? Yes, until we stopped it. He saw the mercenary as an enemy combatant. There's plenty for prosecution to pick from, as far as motive is concerned. Also, we have a sniper's nest with full view of the room in which the mercenary died, right on the island, 
and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. Oh, it's way more than that. Way, way more. It will win me Dora back? Who is Dora? Wow, do we remember Dora? Dora, 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 oh my goodness. Of course, Dolores Day, Dora. It's more than that, a perfect folding mechanism, like the phasmid. Perfect folding mechanism? Get over yourself, Harry. I can still smell the booze on the wind. God damn it. Doesn't it ever leave? It is there, like in your bones or something. It will pass in time. Also, the phasmid was female. The reeds are its nest. Female? What makes you think so? You had to see it. It had the subdued colors of a female. And the nesting behavior too, I think. Incredible. Were there eggs in the nest? Not as far as I could see. There were other things there, though. It had gathered items in its nest, a helmet, a scope and a passport. Actually, you know, this would indicate it was a male. This is far from anything in my field, but I think such nests are called bowers. They are for attracting mates. Bowers are built by males of the species who can't afford colorful mating displays physically. This one was plain colored. Ha. Ah. Aha. Plain colored. It could have been the male, actually. Must be robust if it can move a helmet with its limbs. I think it reproduces by parthenogenesis. Like on its own. As in cloning itself? <laughs> what makes you think so? It told me. Mm hmm. Then it wouldn't matter if it's male or female. The bower would just be rudimentary behavior from before the pathogenetic mutation. That makes sense, yes. Very interesting. Such organisms are extremely vulnerable to disease. A single strain of bacteria could wipe out the whole species. We're probably looking at conservation efforts here. It had mandibles that looked like hair and it was completely white on the inside. Yes, but also reed colored, beige and brown, a little green on the outside. After unfolding from a single stalk, it still retained parts that looked like reed tufts on its limbs. Incredible. The PR value of this is exceptional. Carp discovers new species. Maybe even discovers the insulindian phasmid. No, no, that's too much. This would really help with some of the uh, problems we've been having. Absolutely. This is great. This does not say vigilante murderers to me at all. This says science, news, human interest. You know, it's a really good thing you have that photo. Without it? Shakes his head. You're doing good here. Perhaps only for a moment, but still. Quit while you're ahead? Or no? There was also a dead man on the boardwalk, a missing person I found. Yes, yes. Fallen through a gap in a boardwalk. Drunk. How did you know I found him? The body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of funeral arrangements and uh, family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Still, good work with the missing person, detective. It's still a point for you. No denying it. I also looked into the mystery of the doomed commercial area. I don't know what a doomed commercial area is. Rue de Sochi is Lane 10, a commercial building where all businesses go bankrupt. I looked into it. Why? That's not what you were supposed to do here. There was a possible witness in there, and it was close to the crime scene. He was just chasing a lead and ended up advising a local shopkeeper. It was okay. Of course. Call it community outreach, right? I confiscated drugs from Kuno's dad. Who's Kuno? You don't want to know. You're right, Lieutenant. I don't. You snorted the drugs, I know you did. It's all right. I'm in. At this point, anything is but the drink. So what do you say? You want to take this hot shit back? I don't want to, but you discovered a new species and solved the murder. He shrugs. So I have to. Jude? Anything that ends the trial is okay with me. Quick nod. You haven't been drinking, she thinks. So maybe this time. 
Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay. We have vehicles in the square, and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Now. Now you will finally get to know who you are. Wait, I have a few questions before we go about who I am next time.